Hey guys, JC Perutz here of allstarcharts.com and boy do we have a treat today. Larry Pesavento, 60 year veteran of the markets. You guys are liking our math videos and uh, sacred geometry and things like that. So I'm gonna bring in the OG, Larry Pesavento and I think you guys are gonna get some, uh, some interesting education. I know for a fact I'm gonna learn something and I think you guys will too. So take it away, Larry. JC, thanks for asking me to do this podcast with you today. I thought I'd like to share with the viewers some of the things I've learned after uh, been doing this for like 61 years, starting back in 1959. This is a picture that's actually a life-size portrait, oil painting that's in the Manley Hall Institute of Metaphysics in Los Angeles up on Mulholland Drive. Uh, it was painted in 1929 by a man named Augustus Knapp. And basically what it is, it's a compilation of what they believe Pythagoras looked like because there were no portraits of him, just descriptions and some of the things that he worked on. Pythagoras lived in 653 uh, BC. And if you'll notice the globe on the left-hand side there, he not only knew that the earth was round, he knew that there was 250,000 miles between the earth and the, and the uh, and earth and the moon. And not only did he do that, but he was the first man ever to use the square root of numbers. Uh, he was just so far advanced that Albert Einstein said that there was God and there was man, and in between was Pythagoras. And he was one of the four or five smartest people ever to walk the planet. And uh, I want you to pay attention to this because uh, it gives you some hints of what he was actually able to do. If you look at his right hand, he's holding a pyramid above his head, which is a very, very important one. You'll see a pyramid with 10 little pictals inside of it. That's very, very important. All this is related to trading. If you notice his left hand, it's pointing into a, a circle, holding a pyramid inside the circle. And if you look just to the left of that, you can see a proportional divider that measures you know, ratios and proportion, which he was so heavily involved in because it was also very, very important mathematical. On the left-hand side, uh, to the left of his feet there, you can see the tree of Safariel. Uh, he was also heavily involved in music. And then also you can see another proportional divider that was there. But the key to this is that pyramid above his head. That's the really thing to look at. Now I'm gonna walk through a little series here. I'm gonna go through these quickly because many of you have probably heard about this. This is the derivation of numbers, how numbers started. Number one has one angle, number two has two, number three has four, et cetera, et cetera. This was done by a man named Al Jazeera. It read right around the same time that Leonardo de Pisa de Fibonacci was talking about Fibonacci in the 1250 area AD. And this is took us from Arabic numbers to arithmetic numbers. And that's where we stand for today. These are all these numbers are derived. Now, here we get to the hey, area. Hold on, Larry. Sorry, yeah. sorry, Larry. Um, the, so all of those numbers, I didn't know that, are derived by how many? Can you go back and, and, yeah. and walk through that? You just yeah, went each, right over each, that. Like, that's fascinating. Yeah. Well, each, this is two, two angles, three angles, four angles, five angles, six angles, seven angles, eight angles, nine angles, and zero angles. Is that common knowledge? This is the first no, time? No, not many this. people know that. No, they don't. That is fascinating. No, this was done by a man named Al Jazeera. He was an incredibly uh, talented uh, Muslim uh, mathematician back in the same, at the same time that Fibonacci was there, but he was in Europe and uh, this gentleman was in North Africa. So he's not well known like Fibonacci. Fibonacci basically took the ratios. Uh, you know, uh, we'll, we're going to cover that in just a little bit, but uh, this is this where it really got started here. It took us from Arab, Arab, arithmetic numbers from uh, you know Arab Arabic numbers when they were, they were writing either Roman numerals or Arabic numbers up until that time right around the 13th century. That is that is absolutely fascinating. And for those of you who don't know that have been watching the YouTube channel and listening to the podcast, you're familiar with Bart Jim Bartoloni, uh, uh, Larry, mutual friends, right? Yes, we met uh, 28 years ago when he got interested in trading. He was one of uh, three Top Gun pilots. There were four of them in the group, and I trained three of the four that I'm still in contact with. But Bart, I'm still closely in contact because we became very good friends. Uh, we had, uh, I had an uncle that was at the Naval Academy, and he graduated from there. We had a big wedding there. Bart was kind enough to come up to Annapolis and give us a tour. 
and we spent the whole weekend together in the wedding party. And then the, we had a wedding at the chapel there and it was really, uh, really a lot of fun. But he's been to my house many times. I've Every time he came through New York or Philadelphia, we always got together. And yeah, he's a, he's a stand up guy. He's a lot of fun. And uh, he's he's a he's a he's a good boy. Yeah, good good friend of mine for a long, long time, probably 10, 12 years at least. A uh, friend of the podcast and the YouTube channel, and everybody loves it because he comes in and starts talking uh, Fibonacci. So speaking of which, let's get into it. So, all right, so this is the beginning, moving over from the Arabic yeah. numbers into the numbers that we know today, all those angles. That is fascinating. And for those of you uh, listening uh, on the podcast, uh, links to all of the visuals um, uh, will be on the show notes. Okay, so, we'll talk about here. This is a spiral mirabilis. This is the, the chamber nautilus or the mollusk. This is the oldest living thing on our planet. It's around 100 million years old. You've seen the pictures of the seashells and stuff, and that's basically what it is. What you're looking at here is basically how the mollusk is formed, you know, from the inside out. And these are all relationships. And as you go through these relationships, you finally get out to this area right here, which is your number. P J C that's the 1.618 expansion number. Is that my number? Is that my number? Yeah, yeah, Mr. 1.618. That's uh that's that's for, for trading purposes, that's extremely important from my standpoint. But all of these numbers are important, it's just at how you put them together. Now, this is this is where Fibonacci starts, folks. It starts with the the two planets, uh, Mercury and Venus, and how they interact. And what it what it means is you're going through each of these days, this is how the planets keep going round and round and round and eventually get to this area right here. But when you're looking at the Fibonacci numbers, it's all related to this, okay? This is, you know, the, the pentagram. But if you're looking at the Fibonacci numbers here, here's why it's so important. You can see the numbers 1, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, 55, 89. And as you go through here, you can see that once you reach the eighth integer here at 34, the number goes lower, higher, lower, higher and it stays there for infinity. Why it's important for trading in Fibonacci, let's just change any two of these numbers. What day of the month were you born, JC? Pick a day. day Don't month I'm born, February. Uh, that's the month. I want the day of the month. 14. 14th? Valentine's Day. Okay, all you have to do now is you go down here and you're going to replace 13 with 14. Okay, what day of the month was your, uh, do you have a wife? I do. Okay, what day of the month was she born? Uh, 21st. Okay, so you take 14 and 21, okay? And then you start adding these. By the time you got to the seventh integer, in other words, you add this and this and add them together like this, it's always going to come out to 0 .0, 0.01.682, and it'll stay that for infinity. So any two numbers that you pick in nature, after it's gone through an integers of eight times, it's going to be that way forever. Wow. That's why these numbers are so important. Not this part, this is just where they're derived from. This is the way they actually work in nature. Now, all of this is related to this article that was written in 2000, on April the 17th of 2000, Dr. Andrew Lowe wrote a paper for Business Week and he called it, this alchemy may yield pure gold. And what he did was he went, started to look at patterns and he looked at 800,000 patterns in the stock market over a period between 1962 and 1996, 800,000 patterns, head and shoulders, triangles, lower, pot, lower uh, bottoms, higher tops. And basically what he came out with were not only these patterns repeatable, but they also were predictable in nature so that the market, even though it was chaotic, there is a non random feature of the market. So in 2002, he wrote a book called The Non Random Walk Down Wall Street that basically repudiated Burton Malfield's work that the market was chaotic. He said, It is chaotic, but within the chaos are non random patterns that can be repeated. And that's why you see so many charts on Bloomberg, CNBC, and all the other places. And All Star Charts even has them. So that's what they're looking at here. So that's the paper it comes from. The book is called The Non-Random Walk Down Wall Street. It's 700 pages of the most extensive patterns or formulas that you'll ever want to see. But it's, uh, you know, it's, it it's just shows you that this stuff works. Uh, that's basically the bottom line. Remember the, the picture of the pyramid above uh, Pythagoras's head? Yeah. 
Okay, this is known as the chaos game. And this is also known as the Sierpinski triangle. In other words, if you take a right triangle like we have here and connect any two dots, after you've gone through 10,000 iterations, this is what it's going to look like. So out of any two dots, you can see it becomes into a pattern that you can actually see. So within chaos becomes order after you've gone through the sequence of the numbers. I don't know. I, I can't follow. What is it? What do you mean? Any two dots? I, I, okay, just a minute. Go back here to previous. I'll make this. I'm not so good at this. You I'm see, trying to you figure see it the out. First, you see, if you drew it, put a dot here, uh -huh. and you put a dot here, and connected those dots. Okay, yep. and then just started. Then just started drawing dots. Okay, after you've done through ten thousand dots, this is what it's going to look like. This is wow. called the Sierpinski triangle in mathematics, and it's how chaos is derived from. Uh, a non-random pattern. And that's what you're doing when you're looking at a chart. We'll, we'll do that on the next slide. Because when you're looking at a chart, you have the triangle within the chart, but you have a square. Basically, you have X and Y axis. Within the X and Y axis are the two hypotenuses, the triangles. They're always Fibonacci numbers, either 1618, 127, uh, 618, 786, or the square root of two, which this one is 1.414. The reciprocal of that is 0.707. Within the, the, the square, you also have a circle. And then you also have the pyramid, the circle, and the square. And that leads us to where we are. When you're looking at a chart, you're trying to find out where you are within this chart, looking at the X, X and Y axis. But this is the beginning of it, is all through this pattern right here. Does that make sense? I mean, listen, I, I, I understand, I'm understanding the shapes where I have trouble is understanding in the stock market, like the, where we see, how we see these patterns in the market, right? Okay, we're going to take a look at those. Now, remember, a feeling we would. remember, JC, it takes 25 minutes to become a professional trader, and I've only got you for 20. So you're going to have to do five minutes of this on your own. <laughs> Fair. All right. <laughs> okay, what we're going to do now is we're going to take a look here at the four numbers that we look at. We look at 618, 786, those are retracement numbers. One is nothing more than equal numbers, A, B equals C, D. These are expansion numbers, 1.27 and 1.618. Now, what is 1.27? It's the square root of 1.618. What is 786? The square root of 0.618. What is the square root of 0.618? 0.382. So they're all related. See, each one of those numbers are interrelated. And that's what you have to understand is when you're looking at a chart, your job is to pick where you are within that relationship to find out whether you have a uh, possibility of a winning trade or a losing trade. I'll go into some of that in a little bit, but I just want to basically, you can do this with just a, uh, a straight edge, which is a ruler, your pencil and your calculator. You can do this all by hand. You don't have to do anything fancy with the uh, fact that I did this. I mean, I. I was still reading ticker takes from the Merck and the Board of Trade back in 1983. In the end of 1983, we first started getting charts, you know, that you can put on your desktop to uh, see the charts. Those came from uh, CompuTrack and ADP. But until that time, I did everything. I had the, I had the, the Western Union um, uh, teletype, and they would, you know, send me the pay prices from the Merck and the Board of Trade. When, did you, when was that? When did you get going in the market? I started trading 1959. I was a, I, my background is I, I was a pharmacist. I worked for Eli Lilly uh, for a few years. And then uh, 19, uh, well, I've been through a long, well, I've been trading forever, but uh, my big break came in uh, 1976. Uh, Drexel Burnham had, uh, hired me to run their commodity department in Los Angeles. And I did that until 1982 had a tr really great run. And then I went to become a Merck uh, trader in the S&P pit in 1982. And I was there for three years. Then I worked for Com uh, Commodity Corporation in Princeton for yep. a couple of years. And ever since that time, since 86, uh, I've been on my own. And uh, that's pretty much it. But this is a, this is a really important, if you like Italians, you're going to like this one. This is a picture of uh, Leonardo da Vinci's division, ratio and proportions of the human body. It's in the book called the Codex book that Bill Gates bought in 1982 for $20 million and he gave it to the Smithsonian Institute. It travels the world uh, six months a year. The other six months, it just stays in Washington. 
But basically what da Vinci was showing you here, you can see the ratios and proportions of the human body between the ulnar and the radius and the phalanges. This is your metatarsals, your, your femur, your tibia. All of these are related from the top of head to the pubic crest, 0.618. All of the relations of the human body come down to 0.618 when you look at them. You can see it by the divisions here. But look what's important. You see up in the top up here where he was writing. I don't know if you know this about da Vinci, but he was able to write left-handed and right-handed at the same time and also write backwards. Wow. He was that much of a, uh, an artist, you know, that he could do that. And so he, being a little paranoid, he wrote this backwards into a mirror. So the only way you can read this, which is in Italian, is to turn around and put the paper in front of the mirror and then you can read it. This is why the book is called the Codex Book, because da Vinci wrote a lot of things in riddles, giving you people ideas, but he wouldn't come out and tell you certain things. Well, remember, he lived in, 15, in the 16th century, around the 1500, 1550 area. But if you go back to see what was happening in the pyramids back in 2500 BC, this is right from one of the pyramids showing you the ratios and proportions of the human body, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, and they all come down to this, 0.618. This is the same thing that da Vinci was doing with the ratios and proportions of the human body, that they come out to 0.618. From the top of your head to your nose to your chin, 0.618. It's so important, JC, that if you're off by more than 5%, the medical profession has given you a name, whether it's dwarfism or you know something else, that you don't actually fit the mold of the human body because you're off by more than 5%. That's how accurate it is. This is the DNA spiral. I don't know if you recognize it or not, but that's it. The you see that right helix? here? This right, this helix, this is the DNA the spiral. Heart how heart. the chromosomes line up here is how you determine where you are in the genetic code. This particular picture of this code right here, this spiral, Fibonacci spiral of DNA, is the main reason why there's never been a murder conviction in the country of Italy. Did you know that? Um, I did not. I was not aware. That's, that's because they all have the same DNA. Okay, now let's move on. Let's move on to the next one. I think the next one is the most important slide of all. Okay, now let's put this together for the market. We've given you some ideas uh, about those numbers that we looked at, 618, 786, 1.27. This is a picture of the euro over the last 10 days of trading. It's a 30 minute chart. And if you look at this, gee, you don't see much here. You see wave two, wave three, whatever, whatever. But you say, why are these numbers important? And so all I'm going to do now is to overlay the prices that we just talked about. And you'll see that all of them come in. You're looking at all of them, 618, 786, 786, 1.618, 786, 786. I don't even draw in the ABCD patterns, because we're gonna cover that separately. But that shows you that within the random nature of the market, if you're looking for certain things, you start with these number patterns. You can see this is a downtrend because you have lower tops and lower bottoms. That's in a downtrend. An uptrend is just the opposite. You see, we're starting to see higher bottoms here now. So we could be looking at a you know higher bottom. Now, if we what look at the this- numbers, when you're connecting those lows and, and peaks, what are those numbers? What do you mean, what are those numbers? Right, so those are the ratios between one price and the other? Well, you're going from, this is, there's an even. See, there's one. This is a 61% retracement of this. Got it. There's your A, B, C, D. There's your 1.618 expansion. There's your 61% retracement. There's your A, B, C, D. There's your 78% retracement of this. Got it. 61% of that. So those are the retracements from, got it, understood. From highs, yeah, you're, you're in a downtrend, so you take the retracements from the highs. Got if it. this were upside down, you'd see it. See, this is why it's important, because if you have a chart like this in the euro, you know, the highs that you make, look, see the relationship, look at this, this move here is equal to that move here. This one drops to 61% retracement, this drops to 78, and you have the A, B, C, D pattern in between. Got it. Okay. All right, see, I'm keeping up. Hey, you're you're getting an A+. Plus. <laughs> Here's the most important slide of all, Bubba, right? This this one right here. This is what trading is all about. Nowhere uh, on this machine. Stay away from the slot machines. No, this is what this is how you want to play the game. All right. See here, if you put in three quarters, you're going to win 4,000 quarters. You're going to win $1,000. 
if you just put in your three quarters. Nowhere in this machine does it tell you that I've taken in $1.2 million more than I've given out. Nowhere on this machine does it tell you you have no chance of beating me long term, does it? No. Right. So what you have to do is you have to learn to think like a slot machine. Figure out this figure right here. How much do I have to risk to see whether I'm going to win that amount? And that's what you want to learn to do as a trader. You already, instead of putting the odds against you, gambling is not has anything to do with speculation at all. What we do, I hear this all the time from people. People associate gambling with speculation, and there is no comparison at all. In speculation, you have everything going in your favor. A, you get to pick when you want to trade, how much you want to risk, how often you want to trade. You can also stop in the middle of the game. In a gambling game, whether it's the spin of the wheel, toss of the ball, uh, turn of the cards, the blow of the whistle, whatever it happens to be, it has to go until it's completed. With our business, we can put a trade on and one second later, take it off, pay a small uh, handling fee, which is called a commission, and move on. You can't do that with gambling. So gambling, you have no control. With speculation, you have total control. That's what you have to learn to do, is to think like the slot machine. How much money can I lose? Not how much money can I win. Winners think how much money I can lose. Losers think how much money I can win. That's why this thing is all lit up and flashing, saying, come see me, come see me, win your 4,000 points. That doesn't mean you don't have, that you can't play a slot machine. You can do it. But only put in a dollar, two dollars, twenty dollars, whatever your limit is. And don't even think you're going to win. Just do it for entertainment. No expectations. That's the main thing. Okay? You said it. You tell hey, him hey, there. Everybody right, out there listening. You hear what he's saying? You would now, this is basically, uh, I think what I'm going to do now is this is the AB. How much time we have left here anyway? You go. You, we're good. Okay. I'm just going to go. This is the main pattern that we're going to deal with here. This is the, the ABCD pattern. This is this was a pattern that was, we're going to see it twice because I've got another uh, uh, PowerPoint that's j just very, very important that, you, that, that I know you like. But this was in a, a book called uh, Profits in the Stock Market by H.M. Gartley. It was on page 249. And he basically was showing you the ABCD pattern. This book was written in 1937. It cost $1,500. He sold about 30 copies of it uh, during his lifetime. He died in 1969. I was given the book in 1970. I saw this pattern and I've been making a living off of it ever since. This is an uptrend, higher tops, higher bottoms. This is a downtrend, lower tops, lower bottoms. And we're looking for this pattern right here, ABCD. So that's that's what I'm doing here. Now, what I'm going to do now is I would like to show you uh, the importance of this ABCD pattern and what it really means. So I wrote a book uh, with uh, John James and my buddy over in the UK. Uh, it's called The Floor Trader's Handbook. It's basically what I used over the past. This is what I use. I mean, started using it in 1970. I met John Hill of Future's Truth, and John took me under his wing. He's been like a father to me. He's 96 now. And unfortunately, he's, uh, his mental capacity has deteriorated rapidly, but he took me under his win in 1970 and showed me that uh, and gave me a copy of that book. And that's what I used to do what I've been doing for this all these years. And uh, I'll just show you what it means and you decide uh, what do you think it's uh, what you it. want. Let's see it, baby. Okay, this is simplicity beats complexity. I keep it as simple as possible, okay? Basically, this is Burton Malkiel's work. This was the fourth edition of a random walk down Wall Street. But what happened was in 2000, the, the folks at MIT, uh, and Dr. Andrew Lowe and his group came out with that article and then the book, The Non-Random Walk Down Wall Street that repudiated everything that Burton Malkiel had worked on. Now Malkiel's still alive, but uh, the fellow that uh, started bringing this stuff to everybody's attention was, uh, 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 Benoit Mandelbrot, the father of fractals. And so I just wanted to, we're going to go through some of these things. It's a little, little intense, but really quite simple. Um, this was research that was backed by MIT. That was that article that I showed you about it. Sure. You know, this is, uh, this was that article. It was, uh, uh, the book was 750 pages, but basically it's saying that not only was the market non-random, but it's predictable within limits. And that's what we try to do here. If you'll notice here, uh, what he did was 
they're saying here that when he applied this to over 800,000 stocks over a 36 year period, they're finding optimal patterns that repeat over and over again with an optimal shape for detecting you know, pattern recognition. And that's what this is about. So what happened was when I wrote this, when I wrote this book, I covered it basically on the things that I covered here with the risk management, ABCD, Fibonacci numbers. I'm not gonna go over all of these things because I don't think you're necessary and we don't have a lot of time to do it. But basically when Mandelbrot wrote his first book in 1976, he said the markets, um, the misbehavior of markets, he said that the process, process of generating cotton prices varied only in scale, but not only in time. In other words, there was a seed pattern. You see where it says here? He said Mandelbrot used a seed pattern that grew and manufactured in blocks that became larger patterns that maintained the original shape of the seed. He is telling you that the markets are fractal. If we only knew the seed, you want to guess what the seed is, JC? It's none other than your old friend AB equals CD. This was given to you by H.M. Gartley on page 249 of his book in 1937. Now, Gartley was right at the time when Elliot wrote his paper, you know, with, uh, and of course, this is the Elliot Wave. You know, this is, this is Elliot Wave. They do it differently. They have ABC. What they didn't do was complete the pattern that should be there because this is the pattern of how all markets operate. So that's why it's so very, very important. Now, if you look at this, there it is again. There's your ABCD pattern. There's the fractal that he looked at. There's the same fractal that he was looking at. And all we're gonna do is the key takeaway here, these patterns, they're all related to these ratios. And each of these ratios are gonna be related to this sequence or the square roots of these numbers. And that's why how these patterns form, they build larger patterns. In other words, there'll be bigger patterns. Every time you've seen a, an Elliott wave chart, you know, you see all these zigzags in there, but they don't call it ABCD. They call it an ACB or a BCS or whatever it is. And, you know, you can't argue with them because uh, Mr. Prechter has the, the uh, ear of everybody. And, and all I'm saying is it's all right here. It's not just- well, Hold on, so ABCD. let me ask you this. So. The, the Elliott waivers, right? The way I learned it, right? It's you got your first wave up, then your second wave down, then the, your third wave up, then your fourth wave down, and then your final fifth wave. And that's the fractal. You're telling me it's A, B, C, D. It's A, B, C, D all different? the way. Watch. A, B, C, D. A, B, C, D. It's all doing the same thing. Oh, got time. it. So the five waves, you're, you're cool with that. You just yeah, have to sure. recognize where the – got yeah. it. Yeah, that's exactly right. That's what we're looking at is these A, B, C, D patterns and how they fit. Right. I'm keeping up. I'm here's, keeping up. This is, the, this is the same thing we looked at before. This is just another part of it. Now, here's what we're going to do is this is the U.S. dollar, euro versus the U.S. dollar. Okay, now you look at this and say, well, I don't see anything here. There's no A, B, C, Ds here, but let's just put some of them in. You'll be able to see them. There's one here. There's one here. This happens to be what we call the Gartley pattern. There's the larger A, B, C, D to the downside. Another A, B, C, D to the upside. This is a three drive to a top pattern. Drive one, drive two, drive three, drive one, drive two, drive three. And that's what we're looking at. There it is right there, A, B equals C, D. And if you're really interested, you find out how many days did it take to get from A to B, how many days did it get to C to D. And if that lines up, you have the squaring of price and time. So you know that this has got to be the bottom or very, very close to it. That's when time and price come together. You count the number of bars down in these moves, you'll be really surprised that they also work with time as they work with price. Here is the uh, euro with the, uh, this is a 30 minute chart. You'll see the ABCD patterns that we put in here to let you see how the, the euro is the easiest thing to trade because it's so active and there's no slippies on these things and it makes it really easy you know, to pick some of these. I'm gonna go through a few of these charts here so that you'll see some of this is the British pound. You see the ABCD patterns that are here. I just drew the larger ones in so that you could get an idea that they repeat. Here it is, the pound dollar on a five minute chart. Now this is you know classical if you want to call it Elliott wave, whatever you want to look at it. I basically look at ABCDs. I'm looking at ABCD, 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 ABCD. That's what I'm looking for. That's the edge that I'm looking for that allows me to uh, place a trade and uh, you know keep me from uh, getting now, into now let trouble. Let me ask you this. So in this case, 
So the, the ratios between A and B are those Fibonacci ratios and the length yeah. of A equals the length of C traditionally? Yeah, there, there is A and B. Your pulls back right to your 61% retracement. There's your D level right here. There's A, B, C, D right here. Then you start a new leg, A, B, C, D right here. A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D. And then in, in the case of in the case of Elliott wave where there are five waves, yeah. that wave three is on both A, B, C, Ds, right? That wave three is in both patterns. Yep. I, can, I have known over the years, I had a big trading house in California for many years. And uh, Jack Schweiger was writing his book, uh, Market Wizards. Yeah. He came out to visit me for a week or two. I think he came for a week and ended up staying for three but uh, we had a lot of people come in that were Elliott Wave uh, people, uh, Glenn Neely, uh, Bryce Gilmore, Bob Miner, and all these guys were Elliott Wave guys. And I'd listen to them all day long arguing whether it was a two or a three or a four or a five. And I just look at the chart and say, look, it's a tradable pattern. I'm at point D. What the hell else do I need to know? Right. So that's, why don't you that's talk all. about Why don't you talk about the risk management, right? You mentioned before, the, setting up the risk yeah. versus reward, being able to pull out whenever you want. Uh, being yes. able to position yourself when it's when the opportunities are favorable as opposed to just all the time you want to think like the house yeah uh, why don't you talk about risk management how the level either works or it doesn't yes. and uh, you know your risk before you enter right that's absolutely sure you want to know exactly where you are well if you believe if you believe in the theory of a b equals cd what you're looking for is a completed a b c d pattern because you know that if you get to right here you know, this is where your entry point is. Now, let's say that when you get to that point and this pattern happens to be wrong because you're going to have that happen, say, how much do I have to risk to get above this level right here? That's where your shirt 1.618 comes in because you want to look at the ratios from this high down to this low to see what the expansion ratios are because it's either going to be 1.27 like this one is or it's going to be 1.618 like this one. So what does that mean, JC? If you get above 1.618, you're in big trouble. Anyway, the risk is once you get beyond the ratio of 1.618, that's what your ultimate risk is. But as you're learning to do these patterns, you'll see that each of them, there's so many harmonic things that happen that, you, that most people, they look at a chart, they have no idea what they're looking at. But if they would just look at a swing like this, okay, just look at that swing and say, gee, that's interesting. Well, if you listen to what, Andrew Lowe said that A, the market repeats itself with great regularity and it's predictable. So see what this swing is right here. Oh, look, it is. There it is again. Oops, there it is again. Oops, there it is again. Oops, there it is again. It just repeats over and over again. People look at these charts and they're, they're looking at them through a fog that they're not really trying to understand what the market is trying to tell you. So Larry, you've been around for a few years. You've seen quite a few cycles. You know, there's a lot of new traders, new investors out there who just simply don't have that kind of experience. What are we talking? I mean, you're you're going on over 60 years now. 61. You know, talk to talk to the younger folks. You know, what well, right here pass down that they if, need to know. If they well, I'm, I'm, you know, th this is a book that I've published, and uh, everything is in this book. It's a 90 minute video, and it also has 90 pages of patterns and and probabilities. And it shows the importance of the time of day on many of these things. Not only does things repeat like this in price, it repeats like this in time. In other words, the key time of the day will repeat over and over again if you know what to look for. And that's the type of thing that we try to look for. Everything we deal with usually can be handled with a $300 or $500 risk uh, at the with the most, with the exception of crude oil, of course, and gold. The rest of the stuff can be done with about $300 to $500 gold. You've got to risk more because it's a hundred eighty thousand dollar contract, and crude oil is because it's so wild, and uh, you know it's, it moves a thousand dollars like uh, someone drops a penny on the floor. Crude will move a grand, so you have to factor that in. But it still follows the same repetition. You're looking at repetition and prediction. That's really what you're. This is not hard. It's really not hard to understand. This, I mean, it, it, it really isn't. So this just is another one here. This happens to be the British pound. Uh, this is a, 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 I think this is an hourly chart, if I'm not, yeah, one hour chart. 
You can see there's your A, B, C, D pattern. This was done with Trading View. They've got all these stuff is built right into the program because so many people have uh, you know, used it that they build the programs that actually do the ratios themselves. To see from your high to your low comes in exactly at 78% level. From your low to your high comes in exactly at 618. There's your A, B, C, D. That's a Gartley pattern. All that lines up uh, the way you'd like to see it. Here's a US dollar versus a Japanese yen. There's an A, B, C, D coming in exactly at the 61. That's a Gartley on a sell signal. And boom, and down it comes. We had this pattern today uh, in the NASDAQ. Just abs couldn't have been any more perfect right up here. Uh, and then it broke, you know, a uh, thousand points. But th that that's what you're, you're looking for. There's a lot of little A, B, C, Ds in here. This is just showing you the larger ones that, that we're looking at. You can see others that are in here too, but that that's at all, it's all based on the ABCD pattern. Now, the uh, key takeaway of this ABC patterns can be predicted. They start at small, they move to others, and that's really pretty much what you're what you're looking for. But what's really, I don't know how many option people will be watching that, but this is this is the importance of the options, the option change, because when you're dealing with an option, you're basing, and these options are so important now because in the past 25 years, the CME and the open interest in, in option has gone absolutely ballistic. Now, you know, the futures haven't done that, but the option traders are huge. The option model is basically looking at the, op, the output of the option price, the strike price, the risk-free rate, and then also the time to expiration and one standard deviation. One standard deviation is basically the mean plus or minus one standard deviation. If you go down and put the standard deviation in, which you can calculate, that's going to give you what your option price is going to be. And that's how you price options because you know you want to learn to be an option seller. Sellers are, you know, option sellers are people that win 85% of the time. Option buyers win about 15% of the time. So you want to learn to be an option seller. That's the main thing that you want to uh you want to focus on all this is covered in the book. I don't do any options at all, but I do watch the standard deviations because it tells you this market has continued to be going up. Well, it's been going up since May, uh, but if you'll no if you'll notice on these dots here, these are where the major standard deviations were hit along through here. That's why when we go down more than one standard deviation, this was one standard deviation right here. You notice we stopped right when we should have back here on uh, May the 15th. Once we go down below more than one standard deviation, the trend is going to change. And that hasn't happened yet. It's getting ready to because we're seeing signs of it in a whole lot of different areas, but that's it. Anyway, that's uh, pretty much it. it the, the cost of the book is $197. If you want to reach me, it's larrypesavento at gmail.com. I'll knock another 50 bucks off so you can get it for $147. And uh, it's worth it. I mean, I've been doing this for a long time. This is, I've written, 14 books. This is by far, it's got the most information. I don't know if it's my best book or not because the Trade What You See book won so many awards that, and this one, I don't advertise it. You know, I, I, I this is my closest advertisement that I get, but uh, that's pretty much what it is. Let me, we can show you what we were looking at here with that NASDAQ. Let me just get this up here to show you where we were. Here's a NASDAQ today. This is just a two minute chart and I'll get this out of the way here. You know, there's there's the pattern that we were talking about. This is the garden. There's your there's your A B. There's your C D leg coming in right there. There it is. You see there's 61% retracement. There's your target price was right here. That's where your A B C D came down. And this is what's happened. We made a bottom here. We made a larger A B C D pattern right here. Smaller A B C D pattern right here. Smaller A B C D pattern right here. But that's what we're looking at. The key to this, I believe, has been given to us by our good friend, Mr. Bartoleone. I want to show you this chart because I think you've seen it, but I'm not sure. This was something he did a couple of weeks ago. And he sent this to me. This is basically since 1974. This was uh, in the 2000 dot com crash. OK, <laughs> really not very much. It dropped 85 percent. This is this is your A point that he's pointing out right here. There's your B point, and there's your D point. He said it would be between 15,463 and 15,696. 
The high on Monday, believe it or not, was 15,699. And I ragged on him. I said, look, until you get this right, don't put this kind of crap out. But it's dropped 200 handles since then already. It's trading at 15.4 and change. So uh, this may be the high for the whole market. I know it's up here or somewhere, but whether it's exactly here or not, I don't know. All I know is it's beginning to act like it with all the other stuff uh, that we have. Well, that's, uh, so that's certainly a possibility. And and like any like any other pattern, right? If we rip right through that, that would be uh, information. Yes. Yes. The fact is, if you get beyond these numbers, if you get beyond those 1.618 numbers, uh, you really have to respect that because that tells you that uh, Fibonacci spiral in the markets has already started to expand. Got it. So this is a very important level for the NASDAQ is what you're saying. Yes. Oh, one other thing that needs to be taken care of, too, is this is you talked about the ABCD patterns. This is the this is what we f focus on here. This is going back over the last eight year. And we have four major ABCD patterns. We have one right here, one right here, one right here, and one right here. That comes in at 46.10. Okay, we've been to 45, roughly 45.50. So we're within 60 points of this big daddy rabbit. When this baby's done, the fat lady's going to have the choir out, and that's what's going to hurt a lot of people. Now, whether it gets there or not, I don't know, but sure got a good shot at it the nasdaq has probably made it whether we get there or not we'll have to have to wait and see all right larry well listen we're gonna put uh the all your contact information in the show notes if you want to contact larry get the book um and I, we got to do this again i want to go i want to keep going yeah, i've yeah. had bartoloni on here he was super thrilled that you were coming on uh, i like learning about oh. numbers uh, i definitely learned a bunch of stuff today and i know the oh, audience yeah certainly did so i really appreciate that larry practice so what you ought to do is to take your dates of 14 and 21 and add those together 14 and 21 is 35 and you add 35 and 21 54 54 and 35 is 89 you keep going you get to the eighth integer you and your wife will be at 0.618200218 i'm sure she'll be thrilled about it oh, ladies and gentlemen be. I'm, Larry sure she, I'm sure she will be. I'm sure she will be. <laughs> Larry Pesavento, thank you for being here. JC, keep the faith, brother. Thank you for having me on. Appreciate it. Adios. Okay, bye-bye.